country will give us papers as a Syrian. No country will give you papers as Syrians. Yes. Why? They scared from the Syrians. They think all the Syrian is terrorist. Terrorist. Uh huh. Yeah. And why? And they don't know that most of us are doctors, engineers, teachers who wants just to escape his life. Germany, because they accept people and they accept them to come in a legal way. I feel that they prepare everything for the group, for the Syrian. Buses, everything, sleeping, everything. And they are come slowly by slowly, from way to way, without any problem. <coughs> These laws were written um, at a time when there might have been a small number of political refugees or people seeking asylum for peaceful reasons. Um, and these laws were just not written to deal with anything like the numbers and the magnitude of the problem that we're seeing now. We are trying to raise them, feed them, and try and get them warm and dry when it rains. But these people have no long-term hope, they have no answer. These people are absolutely not my group. These people are refugees. I hear horror stories every day. They are not walking 6,000 miles and sleeping in roadside hedges to come to England for some benefits. They're not coming here for the small handouts that we give you. I promise you that because I talk to them every day. And th th these people are refugees and they need help desperately. They are good people, they're honest people. A lot of them are you know, normal working class, middle class people, but they want jobs, they don't want charity. Uh, I was mechanical engineer in Syria. Mechanical before war, engineer. yes, before war, I was married. I have my uh, house, it is mine, and I have my car. I have big car and good car, and I was working in an international company. But you know, after we faced the, uh, the, the problem with the world, my house was destroyed. I, uh, my job, there's a uh, pump, uh, fired all the factory, and we uh, lost our job and we became uh, jobless and I take my money, by, I, uh, I sell my car and I was used the money from car to be alive. You, you exist because of your documents, you know, this is, the, this is the culture that we live in right now yes. and without having that piece of paper, it's effectively, your, your life could be dangerous and dangerous. Now here, if I die, I die, no one will know about me, no one will so this person was died, okay, no. he's Syrian, just I say he's Syrian. No one will inform my family because I don't have documents, no one knows me. My friend at the tent, I meet him but they don't know me and they don't know my family, I don't know anything. Because there's no documentation process? Yes, nothing. Okay. So I hope we go in a legal way. Yes. You know, people have travelled literally thousands of miles, on the, you know, walking for days upon days and then they make it here and then someone has to wait for five hours for hot water so they yeah. can make a cup of coffee. Yeah. You know, one, uh, they get a meal once a day. Yeah. I, I'm ever so grateful to see that actually British people are have really poured out their hearts and emptied Absolutely. their pockets and humanitarian aid is reaching, you know, the, these people. But I think our visit, firstly, very symbolic in terms of, you know, how we came together. Yeah. And it's a fact-finding mission, really finding out how can we bring about an effective and sustainable solution yep. to this ongoing you know, crisis that you know we've seen mass migration since the Second World War. It's actually about the legal situation, Absolutely. the legal limbo that people are in where they can't apply for asylum legally outside of the country they want to go to. So for instance to Britain they have to, have to enter illegally. We need an international collaborative coordinated legal system for proper help and screening for refugees so to know where they should go to. Someone asked me today at the end of meeting them, what's your advice to me? That's a difficult question. What would you say? This is really hard in that situation because currently the way laws are designed, you, know, you, you can't really advise them, you can't advise them to leave Calais yeah. Yeah, because it's dangerous. Uh, but you can't really advise them to stay there either because it's, it's just such a dire situation. Um, so I think if someone asked me that question, I wouldn't really know how to answer it because you know they, they've travelled such a long distance, risking their life, but still they are looking for hope yeah. elsewhere. Yeah, it's a very hard question to answer, but it seems the answer for me is in the legal situation. Absolutely.